Hello guys, this is Vijay from Dina Code Academy. So in previous video, we have initialized all of these views and also we have created a method to show the image inside the container. That is right now you can see. So this particular method will show the images inside this particular image view by fetching the images from the drawable directory. Now in this video, we are going to add the method so that we can create the radio buttons dynamically. So let's get started with this video. So first, I am going to create here another private method. So we need to specify the private keyword, then the void, which is the return type of the method, which is actually going to return nothing. Then I will be named this method as show radio button. So after specifying that, we need to specify one parameter. So here we are going to use an integer parameter so that we can fetch the particular number of the question. So here I will be specifying qnum, which will denote the quiz number. Okay. So first I am going to specify here another final variable, not a finish. It's actually a type of final. And then I am going to create a here a linear layout. And then we need to specify this as an answer layout. The name of this particular variable. I am going to specify the answer layout is equal to and here we need to specify the find viva id. So you can specify the find, not fund, it's like a find viva id. r dot id dot and then I'm going to specify the id that is answer layout. So I have specified the id as answer layout. So if you forget it, then I have actually given the id to this particular linear layout as an answer layout. So I'm going I'm actually fetching this particular id inside the main activity. After fetching the id of the layout, then we time to create a one radio group because for working with multiple radio partners, you need to create a radio group. So radio group is actually part of the android.wicket package. Then I'm going to name this as RG, which is short for the radio group is equal to, and then we need to allocate the memory so that we can access it. So here I'm going, I'm specifying the radio group. Then we need to pass the context, which is a, this as a parameter to this particular radio group method. And then after that, we need to specify here RG dot, and we need to set the orientation. So the orientation is actually like, uh, either you can set the orientation vertical or, or this kind of thing. So orientation, and then we need to specify the integer parameter. So you can see add rate int def int orientation. It's actually giving you the suggestion. So here we are going to use the radio group. This is the radio group. And then you need to specify the vertical or I am specify the vertical. Either you can specify the horizontal as well, but we are going to specify the vertical. And why vertical? The reason for that because we want to place um, one radio button here and then after another radio button in the another line, then in third in the another line. So we want to place the radio buttons in a vertical formation. After doing this, we need to pass the parameter, we need to set the linear layout parameter, so linear layout dot, then we need to set the layout parameters, so that we can pass the radio group as a parameter, so layout params, which will actually use to pass the parameters dynamically, then LP is a short for the object would be linear layout dot layout params, then new to allocate the memory allocation, then linear layout dot layout params, and then we need to specify here bunch of parameters, so the first thing, so we need to specify here bunch of parameters, so first I'm going to terminate that. Then inside of that you can see there are a lot of error lines are there. So first here I am going to type the linear layout, linear layout dot, then again we need to specify the layout params and then match parent. The width is actually like for the match parent, then again you need to specify the comma, then again it's actually linear layout dot layout params dot and here you need to specify the wrap content. The height is actually a wrap content. So if you just go to this layout params, so you can see the first parameter is actually expect a width, the second one is the height and the float weight which is optional. Okay. So we are not going to specify the float weight. So this is how we have specified the property. Then we need to actually remove the comma for the last one because that is why the array initialization is done. Like you have specified the parameter. So it's like a function that has a parameter. So in order to separate the parameters, we need to specify a comma. So that is why the rest of the name is actually not going to use a parameter. Okay. So after doing this, let's come outside of this particular linear layout params. And then here you need to specify the rg dot layout params layout params because we need to set the parameters to the radio group so that is why we have constructed the first layout parameters after specifying the layout parameters to the radio group we need to set the padding so again i am going to here type rg dot set padding so we are setting this all properties through dynamically that is why all the things are actually similar so i am going to specify here 90 then from uh, top is 0 because we don't want to specify the padding from top and bottom and you can see top and right i have not specify the padding and also from bottom i am going to specify the 0 so that is 0 for the last one so from left side, I have specified the padding 90 so that our radio button will be at the center. Okay. So now after specifying the padding, it's time to actually create the radio button inside the array list. So for that, we need to create here a first uh, variable of a final, not a finish and automatically finish will be specified. So here I will be typing radio button because we need to create the radio button array. So I'm going to specify a radio button and then RB1, I'm going to name this as array, the new radio button. So I'm going to specify here 3. Because we want to create the three radio buttons, 0, 1, 2. So we are going to start from the 0. And so I'm going to here use a for loop int and then I'm going to specify i is equal to 0. 
okay and then the syntax of the for loop is very similar smaller than and it is going to equal to 2 and after that we need to specify the terminator then again we need to increase the counter all right so here it's actually giving the error and here we need to specify the terminator as well because i have specified the comma that is why we are actually giving the error all right after doing this we need to specify here rb1 rb1 which is the name of our array then it's actually with the help of indexing we are actually getting the values then first we need to allocate the memory to that particular radio button which exists inside the zero index then radio button and here we need to specify the this as a parameter then we need to terminate that after doing this again we need to specify the rb1 again here we need to specify indexing then whichever radio button which is exists inside the zero index we need to set the text for that radio button so set text then here we need to call the m questions which is the m question object we have created at the top then we need to call here to here get choice get choice and here we need to specify the quiz num which is the count num variable and then again we need to specify the array brackets with the i variable okay so this is how we are actually passing the parameter now you can see the array is gone what we have done here first we have created the radio button array of uh, three index so it will have only three radio button will be exist like uh, radio button zero which exists in the zero index then radio button one then radio button two which is exists inside the one and two index so first the value of the i is zero then the zero value will be here then it's actually going to create a first radio button then first it allocating the memory then after that we are actually setting the text so we pass the get choice method with quiz num and the indexing value multiplying that value with quiz num, q num so this particular get choice will actually going to have two values the first is the get choice if you actually see the get choice array at the top you can see it's actually having a two dimensional array 2d array that is why we need to provide the two indexing so that is why we are actually passing here two integer values the first is the q num and the second is the this particular value which is i okay which is the indexing so after specifying all of these values we need to set the another value that is a radio button text color so rb1 and then here i will be specifying the i which is the i and then dot set which are used for the text color so i'm going to set the text color so all of this property we are actually setting the dynamically that is why i chosen this application so that i can teach you the advanced stuff like this particular so we are actually setting all these things through xml but now it's time we are actually setting all of this thing dynamically through the loop so again here we'll be specifying rb1 dot and then it's going to set the padding so we are going to set the padding so you can see here i forgot to actually specify the indexing with the array brackets then here i'm going to specify the set padding padding then padding from left is going to 8 then from top i'm going to specify the padding like 16 then from right i'm going to also specify the 8 padding and then from bottom i'm also going to specify the 16 padding so you can change the values if you like if you're actually not happy with your values then you can change the values anytime you want and again here i'm going to specify your set which is a text size so text size i'm going to type the whole property you can see it's actually now text size is appearing so here i will be specifying like 24 or you can specify 25 so i'm going to specify 25 and then here i will be specifying rb1 again which is the radio button array name or you can say the radio button array variable name and again setting the property which is the set id set id and i'm going to specify here i which is the indexing variable value so it automatically sets the id 0 1 and 2 to the respective radio button then again i'm going to specify the array name of the radio button array then i and after that specify the set width so here we'll be specifying the set width and then i'm going to specify here 500 which is in pixels okay so through that our radio button will be created now it's time to add a radio buttons to the view so means we need to add this particular radio buttons to the radio group so here i'm going to specify rg dot add view method we need to call the add view method and then we need to specify the rb1 and inside that we need to specify the array bracket so that according to the value of the index it's going to add the radio buttons to the radio group because if you want to work with the radio buttons you need to use the radio groups so guys through that we are actually able to create our radio buttons and now it's time to set the listener to the radio buttons radio group has a set on check change listener so we are going to use this particular listener and then we need to specify new and here we need to type the radio button then you simply press or tab key it will automatically complete the code for us that is on checked change listener inside of that we need to set the things for the quiz operation so first here i will be using answer layout answer layout dot add view again we need to call the answer layout dot add view method add view and then here we need to pass the rg because if we not call this particular method the layout will not be added to the answer layout which is our linear layout and here you can see we need to set the listener so first i'm going to here specify the m answers which is our answer variable which is we have defined at the top and then you need to specify m questions which is our m questions and then we need to specify here get choice 
according to the choice and after that we need to specify here question num now here we are actually writing the logic and then you can see here i will need to specify the array brackets and inside of that we need to specify the id so i am going to specify here check id so ck id i am going to specify this variable name or you can say check id or you can simply specify the id because i don't want to make it more confusing so i am going to specify here id and then we need to terminate that so according to that it's going to check the answer okay so we are going to write the quiz logic from the next video on not because it's a very long method and it will take a lot of time to actually type this code and i explain each and every step to you guys so that it will become more easy and clear to you so in the next video we are going to start the adding the quiz logic to our this particular application so if you like this video guys so share it with your friends and if you are new to my channel then make sure you subscribe to my channel by pressing the bell icon so that you can get notification when i upload a new video so thank you for watching guys see you in the next video